Tršus, moj raj, vera boj sa. Tršus, tršus, šumati. Tršus, moj raj, vera boj sa. I u vršus, vršus, šumati. Vršus, moj raj, Vera boj sa, gršus, gršus, šomati, gršus, moj dan, vera boj sa, i u gršus, gršus, šomati, i ne vore, gleda kjeto, i ne vore, tato i meno. himself.
People from all over the world are being granted a unique opportunity. As they learn reading, writing, and arithmetic, they're also learning another very important lesson about themselves. Rusty Dornan reports. At the Hebrew Academy in San Francisco, more than 200 young Jews from the former Soviet Union learn how to be Jewish for the first time. You have children from Moscow, Leningrad, Kiev, and these are students who have not gotten any Judaism whatsoever. They don't know anything about their past. They don't know why they're Jewish. They don't know why they, they, they were persecuted. They just know the negative side. Thank God that we're Jewish. Fourteen-year-old Mariana Reutemann would never have uttered those words at her former home in Leningrad. For Reutemann and other Russian Jewish kids, their religion and culture was a carefully guarded secret. Nobody really knew that I was Jewish in my school because if they had found out, they would probably expel me. The people were hating Jewish. I mean, in my school, I was... It was only like me and some other guy who were Jewish, and I, I felt the hatred. The academy emphasizes Judaic study, scholastics, and strict discipline. Students also hail from the U.S., Panama, Mexico, and Israel, but teachers here say the Russian kids thrive by being able to be themselves. They're getting a, a cultural and spiritual reawakening, and it's as beautiful to see students who come from a communist atheistic society, how they can flourish both academically, Jewishly, and morally. I get a great education in, in like, I mean, Jewish and American. For many students here, the academy has opened the doors of history, giving them an identity they can be proud of publicly. I can finally discover myself. I can finally be openly free and then feel great. Rusty Dornan for CNN, San Francisco. From Channel 4, San Diego, this is One on One with Jane Mitchell. Charger defensive end Igor Olshansky, from the East Block to the Golden Gate to San Diego. I will not rest until I'll be the best. A story of soul, strength, and sheer determination. Igor Olshansky is the first from the former Soviet Union to play in the National Football League, and he's among only a handful of Jewish players in the NFL. He takes great pride in his family, their emigration from the Ukraine, his Jewish faith, and his physical abilities. All elements contributing to Igor's resolve, resilience, and routine to be the best. There is no question. Defensive end, number 99, Igor Olshansky, at 6'6", a lean 295 pounds, and able to bench press 500 pounds, has brute strength. I'm more of a power guy who's developed in my quickness game. In 2006, he's 24, his third year in the NFL. A big guy, 
not unusual for the gridiron. That was a heck of an effort by Olshansky. But so many other things about him are, starting with his identity. The Russian journalist, you know, says that, oh, you're Russian. You got Russian roots. The Ukrainian people say, no, you have Ukrainian roots. And the Jewish people say, you're Jewish. So, you know, I just want to make everybody happy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Igor's two grandfathers fought with the Red Army in World War I and II. Yuri, Igor's father, served a mandatory two years during the Cold War. On September 19, 1989, they flew to New York, then to the city by the bay, San Francisco. They stayed at first at a house his aunt owned at 39th and Judah. And after Igor Olshansky unpacked his suitcase, he stepped out onto the streets of San Francisco for his first glimpse of a whole new world. And I remember coming out and there's all types of diversities that I've never seen before, like African Americans and Asians, you know, you're not, you're not really familiar with that kind of races uh, in, in the former Soviet Union. So that was a little, you know, a little shocking for me. As a kid, you kind of adapt really quickly and I went to school and made a lot of friends. His school, the small private Hebrew Academy. Igor took English as a second language, and along with secular courses, had daily prayers in Hebrew. School dean, Rabbi Pinchas Lipner. Practically all the children who come to Soviet Union came from a very atheistic background. And this was a, a, a tremendously new experience for all of them. My parents were not religious, and they're not religious now, and so they couldn't really pass on a lot of rich roots about you know our culture and our history. So Hebrew Academy really provided a great, a great foundation for that. So that helped you assimilate, you think, into yeah, definitely assimilate and establish, you know, a good sense of who I am. Igor um, got a very good um, ethical, moral, religious education over here. And, uh, and you can see it. He's a very fine person. And of course, we're very proud that he also married a, a girl from the Hebrew Academy. The girl, Leah Rubinstein, an only child. She and her parents from Latvia had a similar immigrant journey. When they met, she was in the second grade, Igor in the fourth. I saw him and I was like, okay. He's a big guy. And um, our fathers knew each other because they worked together. They married July 2005 with a beautiful and traditional ceremony. I am here today on behalf of our iconic Campbell's Tomato Soup brand. And as you may know, our brand has partnered with NBC's American Dream TV series and Scholastic Marketing Partners for a very unique promotion. We sponsored an essay contest this past fall for high school students with a grand prize of a $100,000 scholarship. The essay contest asked participants to describe how does your American dream compare to that of your parents? Now the highlight of this morning. I would like to introduce a very special young woman who came to us all the way from San Francisco, California to be with us today. I will tell you that she happens to be, by coincidence, her class valedictorian the vice president of her school student council and the editor of her school newspaper. Her essay was selected from more than 43,000 entries from teens across the country. And from those entries, we selected 100 semifinalists and 10 finalists. And I am honored to introduce Yelena Schuster, our grand prize winner. And I'd ask Yelena to come please read your essay for everybody. 